Jesus, oh God, that you would send your son to us and tell that angel to tell Mary, you shall name him Jesus. That name, above every name, Lord. What a name. What a name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Precious, precious. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> thank you, worship team. I think we got a great worship team. I mean, they, they, I mean, they can play, but they can worship. Amen? Wow. Great job. Great job, Lindsay. Filling in for your mama. It's just a little girl a little while ago. But she's been singing since she was a little girl. It was awesome. You know, it's funny, you know, uh, you know I, I really didn't have much respect for the name of Jesus when I was unsaved. In fact, I really was, uh, had a lot of disrespect for it. I tell you what, when I got saved, changed in a heartbeat. All of a sudden, I, it was a different, it was a whole different ball game. That name meant everything. I, I, I couldn't. I literally, I, I couldn't, I didn't stop cussing right away, but I quit using that name like I did. Because all of a sudden it was, a, a, it was, I just knew it, it, it's, it's different. He's awesome. Um, whew, that's a good song. Dang, that's a good song. Wow, it just played great. Am I, what's that? Yeah, it was just, man. Um, so, I'm back. I wasn't here. I, I, I didn't preach last week. We had Bruce. And Bruce brought a great word. Challenging word. It's great. And then the week before that, we had potluck. And, and I heard that. I heard Rick's. That, if you go on YouTube, if you are not here for potluck, you need to go on YouTube under Southeast Christian Center and you will see Rick. And you need to hear that sermon. I'm telling you, you need to hear that sermon. This, he, Dion, this was a grand slam. <laughs> this was, I mean, and I told Rick, and Rick's a humble guy, but, I, and, and, but and he knows it's the Holy Ghost. We all, it's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm telling you what, that was a great, great word. I mean, it was, I mean, uh, I mean, he, because he was just a fire of God, was just rah, rah. <laughs> Give me five, man. That was awesome, man. Man, it was good. Wasn't it good? Yeah. Oh, man, it was good. You need to go on YouTube. You need to check that out. Uh, but I was at the youth uh, camp, and, and somebody mentioned, does, does any of the youths, do they have something to say about the camp? Do we, do we got a testimony? Have we got a testimony about the camp? Anybody want to uh, uh, give that? Because this would be the time to do it. Anybody? I mean, uh, you know, because somebody asked me, well, we didn't hear from the youth. I think it was Michelle last week. She said, we didn't hear any, any testimony. So if you're not going to, okay, that's okay. You don't, you don't have any pressure. We don't have a. Did Simone have her hand up? Okay. Did you have your hand up, Simone? Tell the truth and shame the devil. You had your. She's on the spot. Well, youth, you are staying in tonight, today. Okay, you're staying in here. And uh, uh, I'm going to be, t I'm, I'm going to uh, begin and finish stewardship. Because I talked that uh, several, well, it was three weeks now, that I was going to speak on this. And you say, well, how's that going to relate to me? Well, let me tell you something. Youth, listen to me. You, in not too short of time, are going to have money. It's not going to come from mom and dad anymore. You're going to earn it, all right? And how you use it is going to make a difference. Amen? Yeah. So listen up, and I think you're going to learn something. 
So uh, let's start with, um, uh, oh, I was going to say this. Um, I said a lot about tithing three weeks ago. I'm not going to go over, I'm not going to review and spend another 15, 20 minutes reviewing it. Uh, as I did say, I'm not opposed to the idea of tithing, of giving 10%. What I'm opposed to and what I think the New Testament teaches is that it, it's, we're under a different uh, set of principles now. And tithing is a good thing, but we're not under the law to tithe. You're not under a commandment. You're not under a, a, uh, um, a requirement or, or a, a demanded to give 10%. Okay, that was my point. And, I, I, and like I said, I'm not opposed to giving 10%. You, listen, you can give 10, you can give 20, you can give 30, you can give 50%, man. We'll be fine with that. All right? And, and uh, uh, you can give 5%. The principle in the New Testament is what, what you sow, you will reap. So if you give a little, you're going to get a little. You know, it's, it's given back as, the, as you measure out, it's measured back to you. That's what Jesus said on a couple of different occasions about different things. But... Uh, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. If you want to see the teaching, Doc is recording it. It's on YouTube. You can see the whole thing. And I had uh, some pastors, friends of mine, uh, I said, tell me what you think of it. And uh, uh, this one uh, character from up in Boise, Idaho, he, uh, he, he challenged me on a couple of things. And we got into it. And, and uh, we're not friends anymore, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's probably, well, he, he'll see this later. But anyway, uh, no, he just brought up some points and, and it was good. One thing that he did bring up that, that Jason brought up that I thought was good. And that is, I'm not saying that everything in the Old Testament that we're, where that there are things in there that, that, that I didn't want to give the idea that every command in the Old Testament, we don't, we don't obey those because now we're in the New Testament. I was specifically speaking about the tithe, okay? So, uh, because it, it, there are other, but, and, and ceremonial things that we're not under the ceremonial law anymore, all right? Those things point to Jesus. Yeah. So, you say, well, what, what would those, some things, you know what, you just have to delve into. Murder, yeah, murder. We, we still, you know, the Ten Commandments, we still follow those. You know, we still follow those. Uh, so anyway, th that was just something he brought up, and I thought, that, yeah, that's legit. And so, but anyway, let's look at the uh, the terms uh, or the wording and, and terms that are New Testament, starting in Luke fourteen thirty three. This is what Jesus taught. And let's pray first. Father God, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for your. Uh, your, what, what you taught us through Jesus, through the teachings of Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, how you would be, a, how you would have us to be stewards of what you've given to us. I thank you, Lord, that your word today it will be planted in good soil, good hearts, ready to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God, and that Lord, we will produce fruit for your kingdom in Jesus' name. And everyone said, "Amen." Hey, how do you like the, the platform? Look at this. Man, I mean, that, that we moved it out so they got more room. And, uh, and no, I don't do tap dance. But uh, uh, we, had some, so we had our men's breakfast and then some guys stayed behind and, and they did this and we thank them very much for that uh, uh, labor there. That's, it's great. So Luke 14, 33, this is what Jesus said. He said, so likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Matthew 13, 44 and 40, uh, through 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field, which a man found and hidden for joy over it. He goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. Is that it? I don't think that's all of it. Is that all? Four, that's three verses there? Oh, okay. Well, the point is this. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. Uh, here's the point. When you, what God requires, what Jesus requires now is everything. Everything. And this is, this is maybe not real popular in, in, in some, you know, in some churches. Is you just come to Jesus and then you just run your life. You, he's just part of your life. He's not your life. 
But Paul said in Colossians that Jesus is our life. Yeah. He is our life. Jesus said, if you don't forsake all, it's a complete surrender. He, it's, it's all yours, Lord. I mean, when I first got saved, I, I'm so thankful that the, the brother that discipled me, uh, uh, well, before I got saved, my buddy told me, Steve, you got to, this will not work if you don't give him everything. He, he, it's, you got to give him everything. Because I kept holding something. I was always wanting to hold something. I have some part of me that I can't give. And, and I'm so thankful that he told me, it's all or nothing. And so I calculated. I think this is something that's missing in the church. And I'll just get on my soapbox here for a bit. But it's okay to witness to people and love on people and not co uh, coerce them into a conversion. Let them sit on it. I sat on it for years, and then when I really considered whether I was going to be a believer or not, I waited three days. I didn't hardly eat. I didn't hardly sleep because I knew I was going all in. All in. I mean, when I lived for the world, I was all in. So it's either all or nothing because you can't serve two masters. You either love one or you'll love the other. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in church. You can't do it. Jesus said that. You must be willing to forsake all. That's what he says. And then, the, uh, and so that was, I'm so thankful that my buddy taught me that. And then another sermon, and I'm not going to say that was a sermon, but it just teaching me, talking to me. But when I was at Ramah, we had a guy come in there, and he gave us every single reason not to be in ministry. This is a, uh, a guest speaker. And when we walked out of there, we were like, oh my gosh. I mean, he said, this is what will happen. This, you know, and, and he wasn't trying to speak negative confession. He was just telling the truth. People are going to do this. People are going to say that. This will happen. This might happen. This, and just spelled it out and said, so now you're here. And if you think that God has called you to the ministry, you better be prepared for all of this. And I remember of all of us going out of there going, Ay, ay, ay. You, know, you better know. And, and because of that, and, and after that was over, I said, you know what? I'm prepared. I know. I'm ready.